good, a good dialogue, a good dialogue about it. And as you just heard, Keisha turned on the recording, so we are going to be recording the session, and that way those that were not able to make it will be able to hear it at a later time. So um, thanks, Keisha, for doing that. So as we look at our agenda for today, as I mentioned, our key focus will be on the key tips for creating content um, and really focus on the video creation, um, and we call that Videos 101. Um, we have a few just general comments, discussion points, uh, and during our wrap-up today. And then we also just want to let you know that we do have a guest speaker coming on our May 16th session, which is Dustin Wright with Disability Cocoon. And um, John will give us a little bit more information about him at the end of our session. So again, our group comes from across the nation. So we do welcome everybody. Um, as we were discussing in our opening, we all have different temperatures today. So <laughs> it's always fun to hear what everybody's experiencing. All right, so we're going to go ahead then and uh, get us started here. Um, and Rebecca and Kisa, I will turn it over to both of you to help us understand the content. Wonderful, can everyone hear me, hear me all right? Great. Um, well, I've talked with, um, with uh, several of you prior, but um, I'm Rebecca. I'm the content officer based in Minneapolis, and I work with Kisa Dickerson in Indianapolis, who is our video wizard and does um, a lot of our behind the scenes work to create the Quillo content. And so the purpose of today is to um, help get a little more comfortable with different me methods for making videos, whether you have five minutes or 30 minutes, making it efficient and fun, um, and learning how to be content with content. So a little play on words for you. <laughs> so, um, so with there, um, or with that, we'll um, we'll jump in. Here's how we're going to go through this today. Um, we're going to talk about what's your message, how you're identifying what your message is, how you're going to get it across, um, and then give you some tips on how to actually make that video. So um, getting started, um, what's your message and how do you generate your ideas for your videos? Um, I like to think through this in three steps. So if we hop to the next, next slide, um, think about if this is informative, if it's inspiring, or if it's just for fun. Um, and, and go from there, sort of how, how, what tone do you want to set with your video? It could be informative, what's happening at your organization, is there um, an issue at your organization that you want to tackle through a video, you know, something, some way to, um, to help identify it and talk about it as a community? Do you have a success or story that you want to celebrate? Um, is there a new employee to introduce, perhaps? Um, maybe there's a seasoned veteran you want to celebrate, you know, somebody who's been here for a long time. So how are you? Um, what's your message there? Um, perhaps it's something um, that you want to share that's inspirational. It's a life experience about how when a staff member faced XYZ situation, here's how they, how they dealt with it. And that could be through a testimonial, right? Something that sort of helps people feel connected, like they're supported um, and part of a team and not working, you know, in that isolated um, space. So, um, and then we also definitely um, enjoy making videos just for fun, just something to make you smile and help us appreciate that um, it's okay to, to enjoy what you're doing and celebrate that or just giggle for no reason. So, um, Andrea created a great video for Quillo, um, uh, for, for her program is that we've also shared with Quillo called The Science of a Smile about why it's also scientifically healthy and good for you to smile. So um, we encourage videos um, that promote that as well. Um, this week, actually, Kisa was working on a video um, about donuts and dinosaurs. Yes, it makes sense. So watch for it on the app coming soon. So um, just some fun ways. So um, getting that message and tone started first is, is a great place to start. Um, it might be a quote, it could be a song lyric about kind of, you know, what, what inspires and, and motivates you. So um, starting there is always a good place to know what you're going to talk about. So, so once you have your message in mind, how are you getting it across? What's your method of, of videos? So um, when you're thinking about this, it might depend on who your subject is, if it's a person, if it's just the message and you want something more informative, and if you want it scripted or not scripted, right? So thinking through um, when you're working with a script, um, it might help you keep time, keeping it to a minute. 
It might help if you've got multiple people and you want to have sort of a, you know, a dialogue or a, a banter feel. If you have props and that you want to include, a script can help with you know, when you're timing that. Um, and some people just prefer not to have a script, right? They just want to give it a couple takes and um, see how it goes. And if they mess up, start over. Um, no script is also a great way to just capture a moment. Right. If it's an event that's happening or um, uh, something that, you know, a, um, a moment with with staff or, or people you support that you want to capture, um, watch for those unscripted moments as well. So a lot of this comes down to personal preference, what your message is. So you can use either method. Um, yeah, the non script, again, is good for those sort of off the cuff experiences. So. Um, so you've got your message, and then what are you doing with that? Do you already have video from an event, perhaps, that you want to use? Maybe you have photographs that you can incorporate into a video, or you're filming new video. If you don't have any of those, maybe you're starting with um, some of the animation models that we'll show you later on. Um, or if it's informative or um, something a little more um, generic, maybe it's a PowerPoint slide, right? So you sort of evaluate what you already have and where you want to run with it. So, um, so those are sort of the first steps that we walk through when we think about what is the content and the purpose of our video. Um, but you're probably thinking, but yes, Rebecca, how do I actually make a video? What do I do? So we will jump into that now. Um, for, for you all as customers, if you haven't seen it already, and I, I, I think um, the folks on the call already have, um, the resources page at myquillo.com slash resources is chock full of um, resources for, for making those videos. Um, this is just a sneak peek of what you'll see there. Um, I'm going to do a deeper dive into it um, in a few minutes and just show you what else is out there when it comes to tools. There are templates and guides and ideas, um, and we are always open for, for more when it comes to tools that will help you all be successful. So if you are looking for something that would be helpful that you don't see, drop us a note and um, we'll be sure to, to help make that happen. So, okay. Um, so you're actually ready to make a video. You've got your ideas, you've got your tools. How much time do you have? That's sort of the next question is keeping in mind that these videos are only 60 seconds. So if you're spending five hours making a video, that's not worth it. Folks don't have five hours. So let's think about, do you have five minutes, 15 minutes, or 30? Whatever you have, there's a method for you. So if you have five minutes, maybe it's, turning the camera on your phone or your computer, you take a couple shots at um, a message that you wanna share, whether it's, I just had a great, you know, a, a great day or I had a tough day and here's how I dealt with it. Um, just sharing your thoughts, that can be filmed on your camera and up, like on your phone, uploaded straight to the portal from the phone, right? It could be a colleague who then sends it to you, um, and you know those can be done very quickly. Now those certainly, you know, they take a little thought and thinking through it, but maybe it's just while you're walking from one part of the office to another or your morning commute to work, just kind of thinking through those moments. That might be all the prep that you need to give a couple of shots for, um, or give a couple of takes um, to your video and, and hit upload. Um, we really want to stress that the quality of the content is a lot more important than the Oscar nomination quality of the video itself. So there are ways to spice things up if you want to, but if your content is good and, you know, then, then that's really the message that, that will carry. So um, that's if you've got five minutes. If you have 15 minutes, which again is a pretty straightforward, um, there's a couple straightforward ways to make a video. Um, I'm going to do a quick demo of some of the tools that, uh, um, that you can use to make a video with just, with just a few minutes. So quick moment while we switch gears and I take control of the, uh, the meeting. Just a moment. Oh, all right. Thank you, Kisa, for passing on the host and sharing my screen. Okay. Can you all see this screen? Was 
Is that good? Yes, we can. Thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. So when it comes to if you just have 15 minutes, it is very likely that if you wanted to edit, if you want to edit your own video um, on your computer, it's very likely that your computer comes with a free version of some sort of video editor. Mine actually has three that just came ready to go on the computer. This is going to change a little bit if you have, um, you know, a, a PC versus an Apple. It'll change based on the type of computer. So. Keep in mind that what I'm showing you is just an example of the types of, of uh, movie makers. But for me, if you're um, seeing the, uh, my search bar, I found this by going to my search bar and typing in video. Here's a video editor. There's actually two that popped up just by saying that. Um, you might check out the word edit or editor. Again, that same one comes up. I also tried the word movie, and I found that this Movie Maker 10 is the one that I like, it's just super easy. So find the one on, on your computer. You can also often download them, again, for free. They come with um, little, uh, you know, commercials and ads sometimes, and I just, I just ignore them because, you know, that's part of it. Um, but then to start a, um, a video, this is a great space if you have um, a video clip. You can combine videos and photographs into one of these. And for me, um, here, let me get these screens out of the way. See, it comes with these little advertisements. I just ignore them. I, say I wanna make a quick 45 second video introducing the Quillo team, right? I'm gonna go to add clip, add my photos and videos that I already have saved, um, you know, that are just saved like any folder. And from here, Sorry, I had this in a, uh, here you go. I wanna add three pictures and a video. I click those, it's gonna drop those in pretty quickly. And from there, it's just kind of playing around and I wanna say, hi, this is the Quillo team. I wanna move this to the front and say, you know, at Quillo, we have a lot of fun and toss pumpkins in the air, <laughs> right? Move these around. Here's a demo of, of a video that we do at Quillo, and I wanna end with the pumpkins, right? I'm just, just playing here. I can arrange them, I can add a soundtrack, and do, um, if I wanted to, I could just hit export right now, and that would be a video. If you wanna spice it up a little bit, this program also has text, where I can say anything I want, right? Meet the team. Meet the team in bold font and in orange. Doesn't that look great, <laughs> right? I wanna move it down so that we can see everybody's face. Okay, great, I've got my text. I can change the way that it looks a little bit and make it kind of snazzy, right? Look at how fancy that got with the click of a button. And I'm still on my 15 minute time, time window here. So um, I can add um, motion if I want something to kind of, if I want the photo to zoom in. Um, again, different, different things to play around with. Maybe I want this picture to stay there. Um, you can pick how long a video, the video, or the, the image is on your video, video. So maybe I want this one for five seconds, this one for 10, and then I just wanna add, end with a quick, Sorry, that, that one made that, that one 10. Again. So basically you can just, you can change the, um, the duration of your, of how long each slide is up here. So um, have the photo come in, zoom in. All right, now just to, to show what happens, right? I wanna hit play, see what my video looks like. Ready? Set go. We have five seconds on the intro slide. It moves on, right? So very quickly, we've put together what's what's happened. Um, it was going to go into playing the video. I can add a soundtrack, right? If you have um, 
music clips, um, especially ones that are like um, free stock music, I can add that. It, um, the program also comes with sometimes super cheesy, but you can find some cute, cute songs to put in the background just to kind of add a little interest. Um, you could also add your own voiceover saying, you know, um, meet the team and whatnot. So I know I'm moving through this a little quickly, but it's really just to show how easily these tools can put a video together and it'll look a little bit different um, based on whatever tool you have. So if I insert my music, I'm going to, I think Joy sounds like a, a great, great soundtrack for this one. I can pick how long it's going to be in there. And I just learned this by playing around with it a little bit, right? So I save my music, and then when I'm ready to go, save my video, make sure it's in my MP4 format, and then hit make movie, right? And just like that, I mean, that was like five minutes because I'm talking really fast, but you get the idea of how straightforward these programs can be. They can, you can make these videos as interesting or basic as you want based on the time that you have. So once you make movie, it'll, or hit make, make movie, it takes maybe, I don't know, 40 seconds to encode because it's just a minute um, and you're good to go. So again, super quick. Um, I didn't want to go too in depth um, just because it is a little different based on each computer. Um, but the most important things are just to make sure that you know, you've got your MP4 format, that sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, as long as you keep it under 60 seconds and MP4 or MOV, you've produced a video. So um, that was pretty quick, but any initial questions on this, this format? Has anybody tried a video editor on your computer that has either been super tricky or really useful? I just used PowerPoint directly and awesome okay a little bit of a learning curve but I wouldn't say it was tricky and I feel pretty confident about it at this point awesome I could make another one oh cool great great so what Alex um, out of our Boston area said um, or noted about PowerPoint I'm actually going to go into right now to show you where that template comes from and um, how you can jump in using um, PowerPoint so so again, this is this video version is a great way if you've got a couple photos, maybe a video, um, add a soundtrack, and boom, you've you've made a video. So um, as lovely as that video was, I'm not going to save it, but <laughs> you um you get the idea there. So um, the next one we'll look at is Power, which Alex just alluded to. Um, I got this from. The Quillo, myquillow.com slash resources. And this is one of the sample templates you can use. We have, I think, six on there for, for di on diff different topics. And again, if there's a different topic that you'd like to see a template on, drop us a note and we can help put it together. What I like about PowerPoint, as, as Alex mentioned, is that kind of once you get the swing of it and play around, um, there's a lot of ways to customize it um, and make it what your organization needs to hear. All of our templates open with slide one that has directions for the PowerPoint, and then you want to delete that before you make a video. But it kind of walks through what you're doing, how to export different tips. My info is on there if you um, want to drop a note and have any questions. Um, and basically, as you go through this template, for example, is introducing a new team member, right? Or this could, you could also change this to, thanks, Jenna Fillmore, if, if Jenna just, you know, reached a milestone and has been there for a few years, or it could be welcome, right? You can change anything on here to, to fit what you need at your organization. Obviously, I'd recommend using the actual photo of the person that you want to introduce rather than our stock image here. Um, but you can do so by um, right click, change the picture, and then upload it from a file, right? The same, same way that you might in, in other programs. This could Anything in yellow, really any of the text you can change, but um, the yellow are the places you know where you want to fill fill in. It's a template. You can ask different questions, right? Why did you Why did you join this role? What would make people feel you know get to know this person, um, especially for folks who may work in a different department or um, you know a, a different residential space or 
you know, that if they may not meet in person and the only time they see each other is a staff meeting twice a year, how can we still help people feel connected by starting to see their faces, you know, get, get familiar? So asking why they became a DSP or whatever their role might be, um, sharing why they do what they do. Again, these are all questions you can, you can change out. I won't go, go through everyone, but it's different formats for quotes, for images. You can add um, uh, stock images if you like. Um, I'll show you that, that example real quickly. Maybe Jenna's advice for getting through a tough day is having a cup of tea, right? Great. If you don't have a picture of Jenna drinking a cup of tea, we have two resources for you that this is on the resources guide. You don't need to jot it down. It'll, um, it's, a, um, it's on the resources guide for you. But pexels.com as well as unsplash.com are both resources for free stock photos. And so if I want Jenna is enjoying a cup of tea, look at all these options for cups of tea that I can now add to my PowerPoint. And I think, yes, this, this blue tea with lemon looks like Jenna, right? <laughs> it looks like a cup of tea that she would love. I'm gonna download this image and add it right to, um, right to my PowerPoint. So here, let's add this cup of tea. On my computer, downloads typically go to my downloads folder, which I know is obvious, but find where downloads go on, on your program, right? You can usually pick where they go. Here's my T. Way too big, but we'll make, make Jenna's T a little bit smaller, right? I drink a cup of tea, <laughs> right? Whatever it might be, you can add it. Um, add in those moments or you know an, an image that sort of goes along with what you're what you're doing or maybe it's a picture of Jenna with her cup of tea that's fine anyway hopefully you're getting the idea of how you can map this through if Jenna's favorite color is not blue but in fact another there this design tab up here has a bunch of different ways to let's change it to browns and tans maybe that fits better or that's your organization's color and you want to include the logo right you can play around with this and find the version that, that works for you. So again, you can be as fancy as you want with PowerPoint or as straightforward. Both work just, you know, as Alex noted, you just kind of play around with it, right? And, and get, get to know what, what works. Um, once it's ready to go, again, you'll delete this first slide. Obviously, you'd, you'd want to take off the, the highlights, you know, make the, make the text legible one, which you can do on this home page, right? Take off the, the highlights, whatever, however you want to color it. And then when you're ready to go, this is probably the most important step in terms of turning a PowerPoint into a movie. From your file tab, when you go to export right here, create a video, right? Um, I found that generally this full HD doesn't, it's not a super big file. That's fine. Um, you can still, it's still small enough to upload to the portal and it's good quality with on different size screens. Um, I have set the, um, the PowerPoints right now that all of the slides, it should fit under 60 seconds. Obviously, if you're adding a bunch of slides or copying them or whatever, it's going to get a little bit longer. Um, and so there's directions on the first page on how to change the duration of the slides, again, to keep it under 60. Or drop me a note. I'm happy to help out with that. But once you're ready to go, you just hit Create Video, and um, it'll turn into your MP4. That's um, MPEG4 video. That's your MP4. Hit Save, and you're good to go. So, again, sort of a, a quick, a quick take, a quick take on it. But um, any questions so far on PowerPoint or Alex? Any other comments on what worked for you in PowerPoint or what didn't? Um, I do have a question. Since you gave us the resources for the um, the photos that we can use that aren't copyright yeah. protected. Um, what I ended up doing to add the soundtrack I wanted to my video was to just record it. Like I had it playing on YouTube in one window and then I just recorded it um, with the record feature. But mm -hmm. in the long run though, I don't want that to become a problem. And I'm not sure, I don't know that much about like copyright laws and if you record it off your yep. own, is that okay? And 
Right. That's a great question. Um, when it comes to the song itself, it might depend on what song it was, right? If it's a copyrighted song or um, kind of what, um, what the rules behind that song are, where it's from. So we might take a look at that um, offline. We can talk about like what the song was and sort right. of where it, where it came from. Um, you know, in some cases, um, it often depends on, again, the, the original artist, if it's, um, uh, if it's being used for a, um, like an, for a nonprofit versus a for-profit, there's a difference um, depending on where it's from. There's also, um, Kisa, didn't we add, here we go. This, this is the resources guide that um, I'll show you here. This, um, bensound.com is royalty free music with proper credit, right? Okay. So that's one example where if you just say in the description or at the end of the video, music was from this website, right? Um, it's, you're not going to find, you know, pop songs on there, right? It's, it's sort of, um, independently created stuff. That's just background, um, music and songs. Um, that is one example of, of royalty free music that I'd steer you towards probably before YouTube, unless there was a, um, uh, something specified on YouTube that it's free to use. Okay. Yeah. But that, that's a good question. Good resource. Thank you. Yeah. So, and actually while I'm on this slide, um, sorry, unless there are any other questions on PowerPoint or, um, making other videos good so far? Okay. A lot of times with, with overviews like this, the questions come up when you're doing it. So if you're not taking, you know, you don't need to be taking super specific notes on all this right now, drop a note if you get stuck while you're playing around with it. The more you do it, the easier it becomes and you really can get a video done in 15 minutes, right? Depending on, on um, what, you, what your message is you're getting across. So with this, this guide to video editing tools, resources, and tips, this is on our resources page. So quillo.com slash resources has, this whole section is on creating videos. So if you search video, it's gonna pull up all of our, um, um, all of the resources related to videos. And it's this guide down here, this Quillo's guide to video editing tools resources. I downloaded it um, and that's what you're seeing here. This lists out different resources for editing videos. Um, Quillo's not promoting any specific item. It's just saying these are resources that we've found. Here's a quick YouTube video on how to use that product. Again, it might change based on which computer you're on, whether there's a cost to it or not. Some are free and you know may come with advertisements. Some might be worth it to pay a little bit on a monthly basis, again, depending on the needs of you and your organization. But if we're just kind of giving you our quick take on here's what we found user friendly about it. Here's how you can use it. Different products for editing videos, right? Um, for folks with um, Apple products, for example, where they have a lot of these, um, there's more um, sort of movie and um, uh, media involved with Apple products. You probably have iMovie for free, right? So that's going to look a little different. Um, so all of those are there for edit editing video tools. The next section is animation, images, and music. We've seen a couple of those, right? Pexels, Unsplash. Pexels also has a video piece, right? If you want a video of a dog running, right? They might have that, um, that included for the same royalty free. Keith is gonna give you a quick look at a couple of the animation options. And then there's a tip for transferring documents, right? If, it's, if you have a heavy document that won't fit in an email, um, we recommend re we transfer. So um, anyway, just a, a quick guide. If you also come across other resources that you think are friendly, we can add them to the list, no problem. So this will just help, help get you started. So, um, all right. Any other questions before I pass it back to Kisa? I know it was a lot at once. Okay. Um, well, Kisa is going to give um, a quick look at um, a couple of other resources. Kisa, let me get past, make you host again. 
and good to go. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get back to sharing. Great. Um, so yeah, as Rebecca was just showing you the resources guide, there are a few fun tools that we kind of dabbled in a little bit to try to get crafty and be um, have some more fun with animation. These are the two that we recommend. Um, we played around a little bit with both and have had fun creating animation. If you've been, if you've seen one of them on the app, that it's really fun to get in there and really be creative with the the animation that they provide. Um, because it is a paid program, about $99 a month, we won't go into too much detail here, um, but we, if you do decide to sign up, we, I would be more than happy to help you with anything that you need. I am more, com um, I'm more familiar with Beyond, that's what I use for all of our animations, but I do know a little bit about Powtoon if you want to try it out for yourself or we can, we can learn together. It's always fun to learn together. And another fun way, an easy option that we found to re record is with Zoom. And this, that's the program that we're using right now to do these meetings. And we're, Rebecca and I had some fun, a couple, had a brainstorming idea and we wanted to try out recording together. Since she's in Minneapolis and I'm in Indianapolis, we don't always often have a lot of time to get together to record. So with Zoom, that is one option that we found that was easy and fun to create a video together. So we're gonna check out this sample video. And if you have been on the app, um, in the, it was for the month of, in the month of March, it was on there. So without further ado, I'm going to play the video. Hey, Kisa, oh my gosh, I love your party hat. What's going on over there? Thank you, we're celebrating Cole's first birthday over here. I see it looks like you're having a party too. What are you celebrating? Absolutely, I'm celebrating the first day of Disability Awareness Month. Are you telling me that today is Quillo's birthday and the start of Disability Awareness Month? Best day ever. So Quillo is one today, which is so exciting. On behalf of the Quillo team, a huge thanks to the Quillo community for making this possible. We are excited for year two. March is also Disability Awareness Month, a time to recognize and appreciate the disability community. To celebrate, Quillo has a month of videos planned, set out for you week by week. That sounds awesome. Are there other things that we can check out? Definitely. Look at the description below for more resources and ways to participate this month. We definitely had a lot of fun and there were a lot of outtakes with that. Um, but if you might have noticed, our, when we were on the screen, our eyes might have been moving around just a little bit more than normal. With Zoom, you are able to have a screen up and you can have a script. If you have everything scripted out, you can read it right off the screen and you won't be able to see what the, what the script is. So it's easy, so you don't have to memorize anything, but it's, it's a, a great option to have. And when you first open up Zoom, you might notice that there are some options along the bottom of your screen. And this is where you can find the option to record. So on right here, you can see that there's a record button and you have the option to record on your computer or to the cloud. We have found that Zoom is fun and easy to use, but because how and where it stores the recording is a little different on every computer. We don't want to overwhelm you with information today. I know there's a lot that we are covering. So we're just going to let you know that if you think Zoom is a good fit for you and your team to make fun series and local videos, you can drop us a note and we would be more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one 15 minute call to kind of go a little bit more in depth on where you record and how it gets stored on your computer. Um, we had to learn, and it's, once you do learn, it 
saves that so you don't have to go back and change the settings every time you go into there. So are there any questions on Zoom recordings? I know, Andrea, you have recorded in Zoom before. Yeah, I think the thing that I learned was um, I also I had a script up, but I had to remember to look up at my camera and like yeah. sort of read my script because if not, it looked like I was looking down the entire time and I looked really goofy. So it took me <laughs> yeah. a little bit to figure that part out. <laughs> that yeah, time, that was yeah. good. <laughs> And that's, I mean, and with the, I guess with Zoom, you are able to record as many times as you want. So if you record one and you find that you, when you go back and see that maybe you were looking over to the side a little bit too much, you can do it as many times as you want. Like Rebecca said earlier, we don't want you to spend five hours creating one video. But you do have the option to go back and do it again if you don't like the first take or the first 10 takes. That's totally up to you. The other fun thing that we've played around, we haven't um, finalized anything with this yet, but the way that Zoom records with like side to side videos, or I don't know how it's set up on your computer right now, but like for me, it's stacks of videos. You kind of get that like Brady Bunch effect. And so we thought it'd be a lot of fun to do a video where like, it looks like I'm passing a glass of water to Kisa or, you know, waving to somebody who's in, you know, another building or another state. So again, just kind of a fun way to play around. Um, it could be a cool way to like introduce different um, departments or something and sort of like pass a baton or something. So um, anyway, just, just a place to, to have some fun. Yeah. We're not afraid of being cheesy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there have been a couple of times where we thought, is that really too cheesy? But then we still do it anyway. So, <laughs> you know, if I could jump in on the, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, the, on the question of being too cheesy, I guess that, that's like a cue to me. I was talking with two of our subscribers and there were two executive directors and they were at a conference and they were just laughing with one another and just kind of blowing off a little steam. When I came up to them and I said, you're having fun. And we talked a little bit and she said, you know, one of the things that is just interesting to them is how much their staff liked some of the videos that were just light and fun and made them laugh. And they said, that surprised us. We thought we always would get these serious moments that we would get them. And I just, I turned the tape back and I said, do you remember how much fun you were having just laughing right now? How often do our staff really get to laugh? And if they're out there separated from everybody else, having a moment to just laugh and smile can make the difference between getting through the day and not. And Rebecca and Casey, you've done a wonderful job and I know we're not done yet, but I, I kept thinking, you know, we, we have a wonderful tool here, but we always have to remember the why. And the why is we have people that feel alone and isolated sometimes. And when you think about your recordings, and each, you know, everybody here has done some now, and it begins to build that habit with people, and it takes time to build the habit of knowing that there's something there that I want to see that it's gonna make me smile, it's gonna make me think, I'm gonna learn something along the way. And that, those two CEOs, all of a sudden I think they got it, why people like to just have a fun moment. Not everything is fun, but a moment there just to smile. I was at a presentation at a conference just last week, and a fellow told me that the average child under between three and six will laugh 500 to 600 times a day. The average adult will laugh less than five times a day. So when we think about that, and this is a psychologist saying, laughing releases endorphins, and it makes you feel better. Smiling releases endorphins, makes you feel better about yourself, what you're doing, and what's going on. So always remember that why, that as we think about this and you begin doing your plan for your messaging, keep in mind that 
it's not too cheesy just to have something there that reminds people to laugh and enjoy life along the way. Great, thank you. I just, I would like to jump in and say that there are videos that I've created that sometimes when I have a stressful day, I go back and, and watch them to help me to take my moment. So just stuff to keep in mind when you're creating yours. So if there's not any other questions, I'm gonna pass it back to Rebecca and we'll wrap up. Awesome. Um, as we wrap up, um, when it comes to those um, those videos, like like Kisa noted that she goes back to, keep in mind for you and for the folks using Quillo um, that every video has the option to click the star and favorite it, right? And you can add it to a playlist. So, you know, I have a playlist for videos that are health focused, that are, um, you know, about education. Um, but then I also have a series that's sort of my own, like, happy place, right, in terms of the videos that make me smile. So another great option for those videos that you want to come back to um, for those those days. So um, any other thoughts on your mind, either about the videos that we've, or the um, creating content, being content with content today, um, questions about videos, or anything else about um, the app, the portal, other ideas? What's on your mind? Hmm. Okay. Well, if nothing um, today on your mind, um, we are going to have um, a survey coming out for the Quillo Nation calls. Um, when you get the notes from today's video, um, we'll probably do a reminder later on as well. Um, we want to hear from you all about what um, you like and what you'd like to see done differently with the Quillo Nation um, calls that we have thus far. Um, we've been going on going with them for about a year, um, and as we continue to add, you know, new customers and folks who have been um, with Quillo for a while, we just want to make sure that we're um, serving what you need in terms of um, uh, these videos, the guest speakers, the resources available. So um, it'll be short and sweet. Um, I promise. I know um, folks, you know, luxury of time is, is not on our side here, but it'll be a quick survey. We'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Um, a couple questions and, and feedback welcome. So um, keep an eye out for that coming soon. Um, Otherwise, um, our next call is coming up on May 16th, again with um, guest speaker Dustin Wright. Um, and John, is there anything you wanted to add about um, Dustin or Disability Cancun and what he'll be sharing with us? Let's see. Okay. So Disability Cocoon um, is with... Um, <laughs> Hey, sorry, we are having a little technical difficulties over here. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes, can hear you, can hear Kisa. You. Okay, I'm sorry, we, we could not hear you, so that was... Oh, sorry about, sorry about that. that, okay. okay. Um, I was just I was asking, just asking um, um, John, is there anything from Dust Dusty and Disability Cocoon that you'd like, like to like share? share? Yeah. Yeah. Dustin, yeah. Dustin, Dustin, Dustin and spent many years in the technology world in the field of disabilities. Many of you may have recognized him from his work in developing remote supports. And he launched last year, uh, Disability Cocoon, because over the years he had developed this knowledge of how technology can work in a lot of different ways, but also found that people get sometimes afraid of technology or don't use it to its full effect. Last year, he started his company, Disability Cocoon, to help organizations learn more about what's going on, what are some opportunities And so he's just gonna share with us kind of where he sees things going, what it can do for you, and that technology really can be your friend if you are smart about how you look at it and where it fits within the culture of your organization. Justin Wright, on the 16th at two o'clock, you'll find him really, really uh, engaging and entertaining. Talks about some of the issues that are out there. John, 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 you helped me the last last. What was the last thing you said? I want to thank everybody for being on today. We're excited to have uh, we have several new people on today that are just getting started. Uh, one of the exciting things about Quillo Nation, we're going to be able to add Texas 
to our future here as we go forward with another organization. It is seeing the impact with people. We just, with a user group study, we just surveyed 500 users. 36% of the people that responded that they watch Quillo daily, weekly, or a few times a month. percent said it improves the relationship with their supervisor. 36% said they felt more connected to the mission and the value of the organization. 72% felt it improved their relationship with the people they supported. What about the why of creating videos? And people love creating videos. Think about those numbers and the impact. People are more comfortable using Quillo and connecting with you. Thank you so much, everyone. Are you us today? Great. Thanks, everyone. I think for the uh, audio there at the end, saying thanks, and um, see you on the next call. Awesome. Take care. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye bye. bye.